Greetings, everyone. Thank you for being with us again today or tonight. It's encouraging to see some of you are dialing in at the most impossible hours. We love that. <laughs> a big thank you to all our partners across the globe for promoting our webinars and giving us such an audience. Really fun. We really enjoy doing this. Today, we are going to talk about the new Marantz 8K AVRs, the new features and such, but also why Marantz AVRs sound so different from the Denon AVRs. I'm Frederick. I'm joining you in my evening from Hong Kong, sweltering hot Hong Kong. Behind the scene today, we have amazing, knowledgeable Jim Crowley in Minnesota and the lovely Jennifer Mash in San Diego, which without whom these webinars would not be possible. Our host today is our audiovisual guru, our maestro, Phil Jones, joining us from his lovely home theater in San Diego, California. Over to you. Good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever it is. So Frederick, what time is it where you're at today? Uh, for me, it's uh, 10.05 p.m. in the evening. 10.05 p.m. It's 7 o'clock in the morning here in lovely San Diego. So, so we do have a wide um, uh, range of times. Jim's like, what are you guys talking about? It's like 9 o'clock. It's, it's bright and early. Now, I want to cover a lot of new things that we haven't talked about before, plus give you a recap of some features that are common to both our Marantz products as well as our Denon products. So the first thing we need to talk about and we want to talk about is the Marantz difference. I am part of Sound United. Sound United is a large conglomerate of brands, and we get asked a lot about the differences and why would you step up and why would someone buy a Marantz over one of the other electronic brands that we carry. And we want to talk, take the time and explain that in detail. So before we get started with that, let's talk first about the, 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 the models that we are introducing. We're introducing four new Marantz SR series receivers this year. And those are, that is the 8015, the, um, the SR8016, the SR8017, and the SR8015. So as you can see, as you move up the lineup, you get more channels of amplification, which we've talked about. You also get more channels of processing. Three of the four amps have more processing channels than they have amplifier channels. But if you go out and buy an external amplifier, you can utilize um, more um, surround speakers and, and a more immersive surround sound system in your home. Um, as you move up, you get more wattage. This year, we rate our wattage, two channels driven, eight ohms, 20 to 20, at 0.05% distortion. A lot of times when you look at a receiver, and we've talked about this, um, the, the little logo, the little sticker that you see on the, on, the, on the receiver itself, the wattage that they put on there a lot of times is this big number, which is actually meaningless. It's one time before it blows up power. And that's not the way that we rate our power. The power of our receivers, we rate them at for stereo, basically stereo listening. And because that is a more realistic way of measuring power, because that's how you would use it. Now, when you're playing it in multi-channel, we say that the receiver can deliver about, um, we say that the, at least 70% of that rated large number. And that is because when you look at a receiver, it has a power supply in it. And that power supply only has a limited amount of wattage that it can put out. And what ends up happening is you ha as you add more speakers, you have to divide the capability of that power supply to more and more speakers. But we're saying that when you're playing this back in something like five channel, or even up to seven channel, you're going to get um, at least 70% of that rated power that you see here, which is more than enough for surround sound. Now, the thing I get asked a lot is, well, what if I want all the channels driven? And I went off on a tangent a couple of weeks ago about this, but the best way to explain it is there's, there's never gonna be a time where every single speaker needs to play the same wattage maximum volume at the same time. So while it's a great way of looking, uh, it's kind of a cool number, it's a meaningless number. For, um, so you're never gonna have, even in the biggest explosion is not gonna drive all the speakers, your center heights, your, your, I mean, your height speakers, your surround speakers, your center channel, and your main speakers, all at full volume. It's just not going to happen. Um, in fact, your center channels probably crossed over, and your surrounds are probably crossed over, and your height speakers are not probably full range. So all of the, the really demanding stuff that will require a huge amount of wattage is going to be sent to your subwoofer. 
So while you look at these big crazy numbers and you and you go, how come it's not 140 watts per channel, all channels driven? That's not the way that you were going to use this receiver most of the time or any of the time. So um, we guarantee you're going to get immersive, impactful surround sound, um, the regardless of uh, regardless of how many speakers you're driving. And when you go decide you want to put on stereo and you want to just really jam out to some rock and roll or even some um, classical music, you will definitely have the power that's required. As we move on, all of these receivers are also HDMI 2.1. Um, they have the, the ability to pass 8K, 6 and 4K, 120. They all have the ability to do um, HD and 4K upscaling to 8K. You can also, um, and as you move up the lineup, you get more ins and outs. Um, the, the, um, as you move up, the larger units have eight HDMI ins and three HDMI outs. Um, there is one 40 gig HDMI input and two 40 gigabit per second HDMI outputs, as well as a 4K zone two. That's how we get three outs. And we'll talk more about de in, de in that in detail later. In addition, you also get, as you move up the lineup, you get a better version of Odyssey and more surround channels. So a lot of this stuff may look familiar um, to the Denon products that we know, that we sell as well. Now, so the question leads to, there's a Denon on paper, a lot of the specs that are seen on paper look identical to the Marantz piece. And people say, well, aren't they, de are they uh, well, they're concerned that they may be the same unit in a different box. And that is not the case. One of the benefits of being um, Sound United is we could take certain things and, and utilize the same engineering teams to build, to work on those certain things. So let me give you an example. Um, think of us like the Volkswagen group. That's the analogy that we like to use. Volkswagen owns Volkswagen, Porsche, Audi, Ducati, motorcycle, Bugatti, Lamborghini, and Bentley. All right. Now, if you look at a car, all cars have to have airbags, you know, power windows, um, navigation system. None of those things separate one brand from another. So, so one team will work on that particular part of the vehicle for all of the brands. So if you buy a Lamborghini or a Bentley, it's got a Volkswagen navigation system in it. Does not make that car, a, does not make a Lamborghini a Volkswagen because the navigation system is made by Volkswagen. It just makes the Lamborghini more reliable. And that is important. So now the Lamborghini team, which is a smaller team, can focus on the things that make a Lamborghini a Lamborghini or a Porsche a Porsche. The body, the motor, and all the, the different characteristics that truly make that car. So by taking common things that are demanded, that are necessary on a product and having a universal team do that, it allows you to have to, the other teams to work on the stuff that really provide, defines the product. So we do the same thing. So while you look at these two receivers, um, we do leverage some of the platforms, like the video platforms, the video switching, the surround sound processing, and things for custom integration. But they have completely separate approaches to the things that make it a Denon, a Denon, and a Marantz, a Marantz, which is like amplification, audio tuning, and industrial design. So if you can look at it this way as well. So there's common things that, you, that a receiver should do, has to do to make you happy as a, um, a customer, a, an installer, a salesperson. It needs to have wireless music, Wi-Fi capability, needs to support 4K, needs to support 8K, needs to pass Dolby Vision, needs to have the latest surround sound program um, formats, and it needs to have vo be able to work with voice control services. Doesn't matter what brand it is. Those are the type of things that you want um, or you, your customers expect um, when they buy a product. So why not have one team work on those things that are expected? And that allows the, um, the Denon sound team and the Marantz sound team and designers to focus on the things that make a Denon a Denon and a Marantz a Marantz. They utilize different parts. And in fact, they have different sound tuning. Each brand has a sound manager. And a manager for Marantz is Ogata-san. And what he does is basically what his team does is basically an engineer, uh, they, they will build a receiver and they will br or any other Marantz product and his team actually listens to it. And they go in and they make adjustments or, or changes to components in 
the um, Marantz product until it sounds like a Marantz. The goal is to maintain the characteristics that make you love Marantz, the way that it sounds. Um, so those teams are dedicated to that. So Jim does this all the time. We will take a Marantz and a Denon receiver uh, um, with the same overall, same specs, identically on paper, and we will set them up with identical speakers in rooms for cut for people when we do demonstrations and we will set the volumes exactly the same and when i play the same song off the, on the same speakers at the same volume a denon and marantz sound different and that shows how dedicated they are so what makes it sound different well it, there's some characteristics of it that that we need to point out the first thing is if you look at a marantz or a denon there are um, there or if you'll notice that there are about 57 percent of the parts that are comparable but most of those parts are like the video boards and small little um video boards and the the board for heels for wireless music distribution but when you look below that at the components that make it sound different um the typography is different and the components are different so while they share common parts, those parts, like the navigation system, do not define the character of each brand. The parts that do, the, the motor and all the stuff you would, that you would look at in a car, those are different. And that has a big impact on how they sound. So let's, let's talk about a few of these. The first thing, um, Emirates uses more parts. For example, an SR8015 um, uses 14% more parts than a competitive AVR with the equivalent power and performance. And that is through due to what we call HDAMs. And um, HDAMs stand for hyperdynamic amplifier modules. And the best way to look at HDAMs is there's a couple of ways that you can use when a signal comes in, it's this big and it needs to be boosted and then it needs to be boosted and then it needs to be amplified. And so say you have a phono input, you got to boost the phono input. That's why you have a phono preamp and then that goes into the preamp stage, and then that is boosted for the amplifier. All that stuff has a character affects the characteristics of the sound. So a lot of people go out and buy what are called off-the-shelf chip-based op amps. They're good, but they cannot be tuned. There's a you buy them off the shelf, they all sound the same. If that if it doesn't have the sound you want, you got to deal with it because that's the way that they're built. What the way a, a, a hyperdynamic amplifier module is, is instead of using an off of the self chip, we utilize components, a lot of small components, so we can fine tune the sound. So say the, you, instead of, uh, if we want the, the sound to be a little warmer, uh, a little crisper, or whatever we need to do to make it sound like a Marantz, we can um, build, by using different components, we can get the sound that we want. Now, more parts means, it costs, it's just gonna cost a premium. So I'm gonna talk about the op amps for a minute because uh, Vamsi asked about that. And I think um, that that maybe others would like to hear about it. So yeah, we use hyperdynamic amplifier modules, these things that we build that have individual resistors and capacitors, et cetera, in them, because by changing one value, of a single resistor or a single capacitor, we can change the sound, literally change the sound. And by making those small changes with a lot of different parts to choose from, you can really, really fine tune your sound to make sure that you get the exact sound you want. Denon, AVRs, and everybody else uses the TI chip. I don't remember the chip number, but it's an op amp. It is a single chip op amp. And as Phil had said, it's a really good solution. It works really well, but you can't change it. You can't adjust a value inside an op amp or inside a chip. You just can't do it. It's only, you, you can only do what it does. So you have to take it off the shelf and work around that. With Denon, because of the way we are trying to get Denon to sound, that works. With Marantz, because of the way we are trying to get the Marantz to sound, that doesn't work. 
So the other thing, so you get these hyperdynamic amp amplifier modules. The next thing is we utilize what's called current feedback. Um, basically, to reduce distortion, you actually feed a little bit of the information back into the amplifier stage so we can compare and eliminate that distortion. You could do it via what's called voltage feedback or current feedback. The benefit of current feedback is current feedback works whether you're playing it at, at high volumes or at low volumes. Voltage feedback is not very effective at lower volumes. So current feedback ensures that you get uh, reduced distortion at higher volumes as well as lower volumes because many customers play their stuff at lower volumes. Um, the uh, also a benefit of H dams is you get better dynamic range, you get better detail, you get better imaging, and it allows us to tune the sound the way that we want it to sound. So there's lots of other advantages. I can let Frederick jump up here at, or or Jim jump up here on bought hyperdynamic amplifier modules, and we would spend our entire 90 minutes because they are that important to this product. To this product, um, not only do we use more parts, the parts that we utilize are higher quality, which means they cost more money. Um, because the um, Marantz team has a bigger budget to spend on the products that they are building, they can utilize even greater, nicer, better components. Toroida power supplies, which cost more than EL core, the ones that look like donuts. Um, Custom-made um, Elna capacitors, which are um, audio grade, but they're more expensive. Um, so more parts and more expensive parts is one of the reasons why Marantz costs more and you pay a premium for it. So you get better things like a Toyota power supplies, better capacitors, a copper chassis to help eliminate even more noise and improve grounding and isolation. And like we always talk about more parts, better parts, more parts. You know, there's two types of power supplies you will see in a receiver, a toroidal and EL core. Basically, if you look at a receiver, they'll have the little square power supply in it, or sometimes you look and it's this big round donut. The, the toroidal power supply is used a lot because um, it helps trap noise inside of itself. So you have this big piece of copper that is that can that has a whole lot of current going through it. That can send out a whole lot of noise into a, a receiver or even an amplifier. What happens if you look at a Toronto power supply? It looks like a donut, and the hole in the middle, all the noise seems to want to go to the middle. So instead of it being spread out into the amplifier, it's trapped in the middle of the power supply. So that's one of the reasons why they use it. They can do a lot of current and they help eliminate the noise that a lot of current generates inside of an amplifier. Do they really sound different? And we say, yes, they do. They do have a different sonic, they, they do have different sonic signatures. So while um, you're gonna get the same, you, the, the surround sound processing is great and your heels is gonna work um, as perfect, whether which, regardless of which model you buy, they will have different sonic signatures. Um, we always say Marantz is more of a warm musical, has a more of a musical um, type sound, and Denon is more clean and dynamic. Which one is best? The one that you like. Denon is clean and dynamic. Marantz is warm and musical. I think the best description that I can come up with for a Denon receiver, which is what I'm using at home right now, actually, is punchy. I think a Denon sounds punchy. Anna Moran sounds warm and musical. Is punchy bad? No. Punchy is good. It just depends on what you like. And then obviously the speaker choice is going to influence it, right? And then your room is going to influence, influence it. Because remember that the room and the speaker and the electronics all interact together. The reason why we make two different brands, the reason why we have two different sound masters that work on different sound tuning is because each brand has a different sonic characteristic. And there's people that just absolutely love the Denon sound. It's been around for over 100 years. There's people, there's a reason for that. They love that sound, we give them that sound. And then there's people that like the Marantz sound and we give them, uh, and we give those people that sound that they love. Um, we noticed that a lot of times, I, um, as you see, I have a Marantz. Um, I, I like Denon, but I just, I just like the way the Marantz um, sounds and that is just, my um, humble opinion. Jim, do we have any questions or any comments about what we talked about? Or do you want to say anything, Jim or Frederick, about the Denon, Denon and Marantz that I may not have covered? Well, Keith Jensen just said he's commenting. It's not a question. Mm -hmm. Instead of VW, I say that Marantz is the Lexus to Denon's Toyota. 
Yeah, you could do that. Or you could, or actually what we always say is I like to compare Denon to like Audi. Precise and to the point, okay? If you look at a Audi, it's um, an Audi is a very, um, they, they don't go, they're not very flashy, but the performance is outstanding and the design is just amazing. It's, it's designed by minimalism, basically. If you look at um, Marantz, Marantz has more of that Porsche feel. It's performance with a little bit of style to get you there. So, so both are high performance products. Both are not commodities, but they have different characters. So think of Denon as Audi and, and, um, and Marantz as Porsche. And both of them have very passionate um, followings.